All right, welcome, board. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Now leave me hanging. Everybody doing good? Yeah, you too? Yeah, doing good. Doing good. So tonight, Gary, would you start us off with prayer? I will. <clears throat> Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we come to the Lord this evening now. We thank you for the opportunity to spend time as the Board of Trustees to do those things that need to be done to run our township to the best ability that we can. We ask you may bless those, O oh Lord, that work in our township. Be with our, our supervisor and all those that are behind the scenes. Be with our utility workers and those that are running our parks and, our, and, our, and have so much work with the grounds, all right down to the cemetery workers that we employ. The patient, we give all them safety and give them all the standard need of. We're thankful for our fire department and its volunteers. And we're thankful, Lord, for the effort and the work that they put into that and that they do all and strive to do what they can to keep our communities safe. We also ask for guidance and safety for our Ottawa County Sheriff's Department who have officers assigned to our township. And we ask them to continue to be with them and bless them too and give them everything they stand in to to do what's right when it comes to dealing with the, with the public. Preach may be those, the Lord, that... Uh, um, don't always agree with us. Help us to handle those situations in a way that is honorable and pleasing unto you, too. May we be kind with one another. May we be respectful with one another, as each and everybody has seems to have their own opinion on how things should go. Continue to bless our board now, Lord, in the meeting that we have tonight. May we do the work, O oh Lord, to that your name's honor and glory. Pray that you may keep us from sin, O oh Lord, and forgive those we've committed against you in this day those that we are aware of and those that we are not. In Jesus, our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you, Gary. <clears throat> I pledge you all right for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, of United States, States of America and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Maybe. <clears throat> We welcome the public tonight as well. Thank you for being here at our regular board meeting. Begin with then, uh, clerk, would you please roll? Uh, everyone here except for Mr. Schwab. All right. I think most of you know, or if you've seen uh, anything from John online, he's with a, a grandson in Florida who's having some health challenges. So, hmm. all right. Um, Tonight's agenda. You've all reviewed that. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. Support. Any comments? Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Our agenda is passed. Item six. Is that me? Can you tell? I'm reverb. Item six. Communication letters and reports received for information. Item seven. Initial public comment period. Moving right along here. So to the public, any who came tonight who'd like to address the board uh, on any of the issues remaining on the agenda this evening, uh, you're welcome to do so at this time. I know I think Mr. Henderson is here. You don't have to speak, but anyone who, at all who wishes to speak uh, to the items that remain, please step forward. Yes, sir. It does. Yeah, that's on the agenda. First, I'd like to thank all those who added their name to the list to fill that position. It was gratifying to see that so many are willing to serve on this board. I know that each member gets to select three names, but is there any criteria, criteria as to how you select those names? Or is it just friends and family? <laughs> I think there are very few friends and family on that list necessarily, so no, I think we examine the qualifications. Yep. So you will qualify each member to make sure they are capable of serving? We will certainly not place someone in that position who's not qualified. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Welcome, Tara. Hi, my name is Tara Angus, and I live at 1514 Aaron Street. And I am on the list of one of the candidates to um, fill the open seat that the board currently has. And I would just love your support. As you guys know, I have publicly ran for office and been on the general ballot twice. 
Um, I've grown up in Georgetown Township, moved away for college, um, and moved away for the first five years of my marriage, and my husband and I moved back. Um, clearly, I have shown my dedication to the township and the community here. Um, I've worked in several different roles under the education setting and also for um, a educational um, grant, federal grant-funded program. And so some of those general governmental things I have um, I have worked with um, as far as the grants and all of that. And then also I have I currently volunteer um, for a disaster mental health for the community, right? actually like 21 counties in Michigan. So I've shown that I have volunteership um, in my dedication to the community, and I would love your support. I've had many great conversations with a lot of you in the past, um, so I think you all know where I stand and my willingness to come together, work as a team. Um, I'm a natural problem solver, and I, I do love a little bit of a healthy debate, um, but I always like to think of the community as a whole. And thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Carol. Thank Okay, we've had to approach you now. Welcome. Sorry, I'm a little short. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Elizabeth Jester. I'm also an applicant for the open trustee position. Um, I actually came here tonight because when I saw the process that was outlined in the agenda and the list of names that was on the agenda, the one that actually jumped out at me was uh, Tara because I thought, I believe she's the only one who uh, ran in the 2020 general election. And so I came here tonight to suggest that she actually receive a compulsory interview from the current board members, regardless of the number of people that select her, given that 10,000 residents have already said that they want to see her on the board with their votes. So I hope you will consider that uh, potential change to the process when you get to that point in the agenda tonight. All right, thank you. Yes, um, sure. Yep. Hello, board and everyone here. My name is Kirsten Monti, and I am I live in Georgetown Forest in okay. Hudsonville. Thank you. Um, and I just came here to introduce myself and also give a face to the name. I also applied for the open role, and I'll be here at the end if you have any questions. All right. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome, Kim. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Kim Nagy. I live at 2407 Basswood. I also applied for the open trustee position, but I would like to echo what Beth said relative to Tara Angus. Given that Tara has run, I do think she deserves consideration. She has demonstrated her dedication, devotion to the township by running twice. She has a great background that I think she would bring a great deal to this. So I would echo those sentiments and hope that you do give her an interview. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. My name is Kelly Kuiper. I was not planning on speaking, but it appears that there are many applicants uh, on the list in uh, person here tonight, so I thought I would also introduce myself. Um, I submitted a resume, so I hope you all had a chance to read that, but just uh, for your benefit, um, I was an employee here at the township from 2010 to 13. Um, I've also been a trustee in Caledonia Township and served on their planning commission um, and most importantly worked on their parks uh, committee. And if you've been out to Caledonia, they now have a few miles of non-motorized trail that I'm very proud to have been a part of. Um, and then in 2016, I was the county commissioner for this particular district, and I currently serve on the ZBA here. So I think that um, those Positions show that I do have a dedication and a willingness to serve in a public uh, forum. I recently just had my second child a few months ago, which um, prevent, uh, presented some challenges for running in the last election. So with this opportunity, it just seemed like it was a bit providential that um, I have that ability and space now with uh, my time and my family, and I would love an opportunity to serve. So, again, I'll be here for questions if you have any for me. Thank, Thank you. you. Becky, you might beg to differ on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was up here the first time I decided to <laughs> have a baby, have a baby during my first term. So. Yeah, no, you, can, you guys can manage it. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? See no one else. Yeah, I'll just make this preliminary comment. We'll come to that point in the agenda if you guys don't mind. But we really are uh, blessed as a community to have so many people willing to serve. We really appreciate it. I mean, the amount of qualifications, the background, the education, the experience, the willingness to serve is um, 
it's really great. I mean, it's really great to see all of you, both those that came as well as those who submitted maybe didn't come or speak tonight. But thank you. Thank you all. Uh, okay, so seeing there are no, no other uh, takers here, we'll close that initial public comment period. Item number eight on our agenda is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve of our consent agenda this evening? So moved. Support. Support. Moved supported. Any discussion? I know some of these came through committee, and anybody has questions they wish to remove any item. Otherwise, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Fairly light consent agenda tonight. All right. Item nine. I alluded earlier to Mr. Henderson that also he's here in, in regard to this IFEC application. Uh, item 9 is an application to receive uh, their application and to set the matter for a public hearing. Um, is there a motion to set this matter for a public hearing? So we'll support. Supported. So that's all just so we all understand that's all we're doing tonight. We're not voting on whether to approve of it, but merely to set the... Uh, statutorily required hearing. Any comments, questions, conversation, anything you wish to ask anyone tonight? All right. Seeing none, then this is a roll call vote. So, Ryan, would you call the roll? <coughs> Mr. Bellick? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Treasurer? Yes. Clerk is yes. Supervisor? Yes. Okay. That passes, and the public hearing will be set then. For uh, August 23, so our next board meeting two weeks from this evening, and uh, the public is welcome to comment on that request for a tax exemption. All right, item number 10, DPW Cemetery Lift Truck Purchase, <coughs> item that came up through the Finance Committee. Is there a motion to place this uh, for approval on the floor? So move. Or move and support. All right. So discussion uh, about this particular item. I'm not sure if, how many of you, I think we've all probably been uh, at uh, the cemetery and in their building there and been able to see um, some of the equipment they have as well as some of the storage and they have need from time to time to, to get at things that are heavy and that are up high. So uh, they've had a unit for quite some time. Uh, any any thoughts about that? I know it came through committee. We had discussion about it. Um, you know, there's discussion about do you buy new, do you buy used. We thought used would be um, probably a better use of funds, uh, quality, but but and not too old, but not new either. Um, any additional comments from finance or for anybody who's not on finance about that? No? The, I mean, the quotes that we got were anywhere from 32 to 40. And for a brand new one, uh, we were able to do a little bit of digging and see that you could get a five-year-old one for under 20. So the lack of how often they used it was a huge defining, defining factor in us putting a limited budget on it. So. Sure. Okay, anyone else? All right, hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The authority is given for that purchase. All right, item number 11, the Aetna Census Smart Point Water Meter Endpoints. Is there a motion to approve the Aetna Estimates so, so presented. All right. Support. Moved and supported. Uh, Gary, you're yes. on that committee. Thoughts about that? So <clears throat> the issue we've had is water meters um, have a, a lifespan of about 20 years, I think we talked about, didn't we, Dan? 25. Yeah. So after 20 years, uh, the water meters are, really aren't as accurate as they used to be. So one of the issues we've been running into is, so let's say we add up all the water <clears throat> that's being used from the houses according to their meter, and it's 800,000 gallons. But then we're also metered for water going into the city of Wyoming, and that may show us using a million gallons. So there could be a discrepancy. There's something at 200,000. Well, we got to pay on the, the, the $200,000 extra that we pay on that meter, but we're billing on the older meters. So they need to be replaced. Um, the city of Wyoming has, uh, has, has adopted this Aetna census smart point meter, so it would be the same type of meter they're actually using in the city of Wyoming, which is who we purchase water from. And we actually have uh, grant money coming up from the, uh, what do they call that, and the, there's a name for it. The COVID money? Yeah, COVID, COVID grants. Yeah. yeah. So we're hoping to use some of that money to offset this cost. 
Um, the nice thing about it is that uh, it, it benefits the entire township. So we all we all benefit from getting actual readings of the water. Um, the people that are using water and sewer, if you're on a well on a septic, it wouldn't affect you. But if you're using water and sewer, this is affecting those individuals. So we're not like taxing people that aren't using it because this is something that they're paying for anyway. So mm -hmm. we want to get started with this. This does not replace all the water meters in the township. This is just a a beginning. How many do we think we could get with this first time? This first start is for 500 and some infrastructure. And so obviously we have more than 15,000 meters in place. And I also want to point out, he was correct in what he said about accuracy, but it, the accuracy is only in the residents, it declines only in the residents' favor. It doesn't ever read high. It only slows down as it gets older. So it's not like we're overbilling. I just wanted to clarify that okay. you know, the accuracy is uh, not overcharging. It would be only undercharging. I see. So I see. And and the amount of time you think it might take to cover the, the township? I mean, what's the, the vision? This is a test, kind of a, I should say a test, but it's a pilot to get it going and get it started. Um, and we're in no hurry to get the whole township done because they were not all installed at the same time originally. They're not all at the same age. So this is just a, a test to stop putting in an old system at first and putting in the new system. And, uh, and depending on how this first group goes, um, we come back with a plan for the remainder, but we kind of want to get these installed and see how it's going before we go for a, a large plan for all, you know, 15 plus thousand. So we're talking years to answer your question. Okay. All right. Because we will need like a license. We'll have to hire a licensed plumber to. We'll probably put that up for bids to see who be willing to do these and have them do it correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And so these 500 would replace like the oldest 500 in the community. Is that what you're thinking? Well, there is um, with the reading of different systems, it it may make more sense to target a certain area as opposed to putting them all over the place. So there's those are those issues we want to work out together. Um, it's also some joint reading we could do with the city of Wyoming. So their their signals will overlap ours a little bit. So we're interested in kind of optimizing that at first. So uh, it won't be necessarily the oldest, but to target the oldest areas. Okay. It's all in one unit? So it's no. Yes. no. No, it'll be like the current ones, which is a wireless. Right. So some we only have to replace for a newer meter that's installed. We only have to replace the, the wireless part eventually. So. And we will be getting the data first, or it goes to Wyoming first, and then we have to ask for the data the reads. Well, the way this is set up right now is Wyoming could kind of be a fallback as opposed to us getting the data uh, in the initial setup. So it's just a system run on the same network. And uh, so we can help cover each other's areas. So we're hoping we'll bring in all the reads ourselves, but that's kind of an, an extra area to kind of cover the signal. So um, they should all come to us directly is the plan. But that's why we want to install a few um, to make sure it's working properly as opposed to putting them all in and having issues that we didn't anticipate. And I did notice, too, it's, there's something in it about leak, leak. Alert or something. So is that something? Because I remember a couple of years ago we had a resident that had like a thirty-five hundred dollar water bill because they had a broken faucet in the winter, and that I kind of said there's got to be software that recognizes when somebody's well, using. A yeah, ton that's the, addition, the additional read should help with leak detection because you can tell if somebody's using water at more intervals during the day as opposed to using it for six hours. Um, in the summer, it's difficult to detect leaks because huge amounts of sprinkling occur and so but yes in the winter you could see if someone's continuously using water you get a better idea of that um, it's not like we know exactly how much they're using but the setup is to know and say wow they're using water every segment of the day and then to notify them if it's larger to say hey just be aware this is normally an indicator of a leak but yeah that's the goal but obviously that's years in coming for all the homes we also thought it was nice adopting a system that Wyoming has already started with, so we can kind of get, hopefully get the bugs out of it. So it's something they've adopted, so it's something that we can learn from them and what worked and what didn't work. So, yeah. yeah. And 
to satisfy anyone's curiosity, and I know the board is aware of this, but uh, under that CARES Act, the township's been allocated roughly $5 million, whether we ask for it or not, or it came. And it's got, you know, pretty tight restrictions as far as where it can be used, and water sewer is one of those areas. So um, it's a, a benefit when it's something we were going to undertake yeah. anyway, you know. So, all right. Um, there's a motion then before you. There's been discussion. There's no more discussion or questions. Take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is carried. Okay, item number 12, application for township trustee position. Um, there's a, a, a process which came out of finance committee, uh, and I'll just say it, it sort of mirrors the way we did it the last time. Um, way back when, seems like a long time ago, it certainly sort of is, but I tried to fill a position like this maybe 14 or 15 years ago. At that time, we had, I think, three interested parties, maybe four. Um, so much different, you know. And then this last time, uh, we had more, and we interviewed just some of them. So we were trying to branch off from that to say it, it's not necessary to interview 19 people, uh, but let's first get a read on where each of us is. And so that's where we came up with uh, sort of following that previous protocol. Um, it's not magic, but uh, it, it seemed to work well. Um, we've each submitted tonight then uh, votes. And just, again, for the benefit of the public, and especially for candidates, I have no idea. I don't know. I haven't seen who they voted for. There's none of that, you know. So um, we're all curious, I think, about one another. Um, and Dan has the... The, uh, the votes that we cast. And I don't know, Dan, is that something we should look at before we place a motion before the board? Oh, okay. I guess the answer to that is yes. It's a little small, but four people received three votes uh, uh, for interviewing. Okay. Can you, see, can you read the name? I will. Um, oh, I thought you were asking, Dan. I can, I can certainly do that. So um, I see. Uh, uh, I can read them. Just okay. It's Kelly Kuiper, Kristen Man Manti. Manti, sorry. Uh, Adam Vanderban and Dan Winarski. Is there just one vote in H, column H? What do you mean? Sorry? They just, did column H only vote for one? I just want to make sure. Who, I, I'm sorry. There, there's one vote in H, column H, H two and C. The point, the point being it's up to three. Yeah. Apparently someone exercised the right to, to do one. That's fine. I just yeah. wanted to make sure none was Okay. Fine. Some did one, one did two. Yeah. Yeah. This is also on our website if anybody wants to see it. Okay. But on the board page, on your board page. I had one. Okay. And John, John Schwamm voted? He, he emailed, emailed me, so he's on the list, yes. So, given we have four candidates with three votes each. I make a motion yeah. that we interview the four that have been selected there. I mean, it's tied, so we move on. Support? Makes sense. Thoughts? Becky? My thought echoes some public comment that we had that Tara Angus has run in the general election the past two times the board has um, has had open seats, and, um, and I think that this would be an excellent opportunity for her voice to be heard. Um, and so my hope would be that this board would interview the four candidates hi highlighted as well as Tara Angus um, for reasons, you know, that were shared during public comments. Okay. I appreciate your, your – uh, you moved and you supported? I supported. Oh, you supported. Okay. So um, – do you want to get board response to that, or do you, are you seeking to make a motion to amend the motion that's on the floor? 
I guess either way, I, I mean, I'm curious to, to hear what the other four of you think, but I think that if I make it as a motion to amend Gary Belding's motion, then I will hear your feedback, right? <laughs> well, I think, otherwise you may be left hanging for a second and, and then let, be left curious, you know. So I, I'll speak, I'll speak from, for myself. Um, and Tara, I, I'll speak to you as well because you're the one mentioned there. I, I respect um, Tara a great deal and her uh, consistent involvement and the interest in what's going on. And I furthermore respect the fact, and you mentioned this, Tara, that, that she doesn't berate us when she disagrees with us. She is uh, thoughtful about her points and um, uh, does not take, you know, our disagreement on a point as something personal. So I respect her a great deal for that. I feel as I would be avoiding the process um, to to um, interview and feel a little bit perfunctory at this point, okay. just given the vote tally. Okay. And so I um, don't mean that in any way to slight uh, her or Tom Healy, for that matter, yeah. um, who's been a real public servant to this township um, and continues to be. So that would be my thought is it it, it, it could happen, but it wouldn't be efficacious. Okay. That's my thought. So... I, I agree. I agree with that. We we had the process, and we did the process. So we actually have one more than what we normally would have had because we said we we're going to do three, but because we have a tie, that's why I make the motion we go with the four ties and move on. Okay. Can I have one more thought uh, to what I did and what you just echoed? But I just want each of you to know, and I think it was undoubtedly true for each of you just by the experience I've had with you. I looked at every application, every resume. Mm -hmm the extent that I could find out more about that person I did. I called some people. I mean, I didn't call everybody in that list. Called some of them, talked to them. Um, and I know it can seem, especially those who didn't receive any votes, as if they were just, you know, why did I even try? I guarantee you that people put eyes on it and gave thought to it. And, um, you know, that's just the process. So anyone else? I do have a question on whether or not John, do we need to vote as a board on whether we accept John's? I mean, he can make suggestions, but I think as a board, we need to decide if we'll even accept his. And it wasn't presented as, shall, shall we accept John's phone in? My, my personal opinion is if we were here uh, taking any other measure other than to engage in an interview and actually something substantive and a vote on who we might choose, he would be kind of out of luck. But since we were merely taking uh, a tally, mm -hmm. uh, he could give that input as apparently he did, not to me, I don't think to any of you, but I'm guessing to you, Dan, directly, um, as, a, as a reasonable means of participation during a medical emergency that I would feel wouldn't be right to exclude him from. Well, and I think that we handed in to Dan and Victor our votes before the beginning of this meeting, and it sounds like um, John's situation was similar. He got it to Dan prior to the start of this meeting, um, and I think that this was that the scheduling of the absence wasn't necessarily something that was in his purview um, to choose what dates he was going to be gone, since so this is related to a family medical. Um, piece that he is supporting his son in law through. Um, and so I absolutely agree that just like we submitted ours prior to the start of this meeting, Jens should be accepted similarly. But obviously, to Michael's point, uh, he's clearly not casting a vote on no. this motion. <laughs> so, I mean, you might guess as to how you think he would vote, but he doesn't get to vote on this motion. Mm -hmm. So, correct. Um, any other comments? Either way, in any of that. So, we would have four interviews, and as I understand it, under the motion is presented and seconded by Michael that um, would come before us at the meeting on the 23rd, um, and that at that meeting, or by the end of that, I should say at the end of that meeting, that there would be a vote taken until we have someone to uh, fill that seat. Correct. We would need to appoint that night. That night, yes. Because our statutory obligation... 45 uh, days. 45 days. Yep. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, anyone else wish to comment on the motion that's before you? Otherwise, we'll take a vote. Could you scroll up to the top, please? 
Interesting. Who are we looking at that's interesting? Just one vote. Sure. And just two votes and one column, too. That would be me. <laughs> I don't mind saying I looked at the people that are currently serving in the township and have for years and at different points in time, obviously. That was a rationale for me. But That was the rationale for me as well. People that had, had or currently are actively involved. In and having government. said that, if I may piggyback on my own comment, but for anyone who wasn't chosen, if someone who's presently serving on one of our committees is chosen, it will mean an opening there and there's new opportunities and new ways to get involved. So. Um, all right, so all in favor, this is not a roll call, is it? I don't see a reason that this would need to be. So all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Me. Excuse me? Me. Aye. All right. All right. Thank you. And so that passes, and uh, we will then on the 23rd, and we'll send out <coughs> invitations to those. I know two of you are here tonight, uh, maybe more. Maybe I just saw two that spoke. Um Obviously, we'll let you know, and I think the process was before, and it's up to this board, um, and perhaps we'll discuss it that evening, but we typically had them leave the room. Is that something to talk about now, or should we defer on that? Do you remember, Dan? Didn't I we have them come in one at a time? I think we could cover those ideas in finance, because we really didn't right. know how many we were going to have to kind of sure. come up with a plan. Okay. Um, so they'll be fairly not not you know, notified ahead of time as to what, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. I might want to add, I was quite impressed that we had 19 applications. Yeah. And I opened yeah. that up and I was like, wow. Yeah. And I did go through them all too and I was yeah. Yeah. Some quite surprised. Yeah. Some really good ones. It was great to have a, like, quali a lot of qualifications. So was I can make it, you know, sort of a political comment. I think last year people got so involved at, at a level, at a deeper level than maybe they had in so long that I think more and more people are saying, can I do, you know? Where can I serve, you know? So. Good position to be in when you have a lot of overly qualified candidates that want to participate in local governance. Good problem to have. All right. Um, second public comment period. At this point, any one of you may speak to the board on any subject. It could be someone who's already spoken or someone who has not tonight. Uh, this is your chance. Uh, we just simply ask you to identify yourself and your street address, and the floor is yours. Welcome. Good evening. Um, my name is Bill Brock. I'm a resident of Granville, and with that is in Ottawa County. Um, I'd like to address and speak to the the ethics. Uh, I'm sorry, the code of conduct and ethics policy, which was adopted in 2010. Um, I know that some members of this board today were, were present at that time. Um, I'd just like to make clear that I believe the the code of conduct and ethics policy is a moral document. It's a moral statement of priorities. It provides thresholds and standards for how to navigate compromising situations in order to maintain political and personal integrity, particularly when under duress. So as a resident of a neighboring community, I'm committed to raising a moral witness concerning the integrity of this document since what happens in this community affects mine as well and others. As you know, I hold the position that this code of conduct and ethics policy was violated through conflicts of interest when members of this board were associated with Ottawa Impact and when they voted in the affirmative to allow this organization a permit for a parade on Memorial Day. Now, at the time of this permit's approval, these board members did not disclose their direct and personal uh, interest with Ottawa Impact. The situation was then compounded by not recusing themselves from voting on this matter. Now, according to township policy, the best approach concerning this matter would have been to avoid it completely, as the township policy states, uh, in these situations of impropriety, impropriety or, or conflicts of interest to avoid the mere appearance of. So it is my position that this impro impropriety was antithetical to the overarching letter and spirit of the policy. So subsequently, 
I petition this board to restore the integrity of the policy by being publicly accountable to it through an acknowledgement of said violations and taking remedial action for them. Additionally, I strongly suggest that the policy be integrated into these board meetings by affixing it uh, to the agenda as an agenda item. My hope is that this board will mirror the values of this moral document, the Code of Conduct and Ethics Policy, and that that policy and that these members, whoever takes this position as, as trustees and board members, that they will be an exemplar for maintaining ethical standards in West Michigan. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to address that. Um, can we do so during the discussion? Would you mind, Gary? Sure. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that, Gary. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. My name is Liz City. I am a resident of Georgetown Township, and I am in the forest at 7057 Williamstown. I'm here to rehabilitate the integrity of the Georgetown Township Board by addressing how on April 26, 2021, the Board violated the Township's Code of Conduct and Ethics Policy by allowing the issuance of a permit to Ottawa Impact to be the primary sponsor for its Memorial Day Parade. According to Policy 2010-01, Georgetown Charter Township Code of Conduct and Ethics Policy, adopted on February 8, 2010, with motion number 100208-5, section 7, under the MCL 15.341, a public official shall not participate in the negotiations or executions of issuance of permits or other regulation or supervision relating to any business entity in which he or she has directly or indirectly a financial or personal interest. When the permit was issued, five members of that board supported an online political petition called the Ottawa Declaration, which was promoted and paid for by Ottawa Impact. Most of these members attached their photos and signed their names to it, signaling a direct and personal interest with the matter. Also, the township clerk acted as the parade chairperson, which created a role of regulation or supervision related to the sponsor. Lastly, Ottawa Impact functions as a domestic nonprofit corporation and is deemed as a business entity by the state of Michigan. The correct action that should have occurred would have been for members to disclose conflicts of interest to the board and immediately recuse themselves from voting on the matter. This action is obligatory within this township's policy. Public officials should avoid creating the appearance of impropriety. I humbly request this board publicly acknowledge this violation of public trust and be administratively accountable to this policy so that we can be above reproach, and you can lead with integrity. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Hello. My name is Angela Reed, and I'm a resident of Georgetown Township, residing at 8412 Gulfside Drive. I'm here to appeal to Georgetown Township board members to be accountable to the Code of Conduct and Ethics Policy and to conduct the affairs of their office in accordance with the policy. On February 8, 2010, the Township adopted a Code of Conduct and Ethics Policy wherein it states, public office is a public trust to be used solely to advance the public interest. Decisions should be made on the merits and based upon objective judgment. Public officials must be accountable for their actions we must honor and respect democratic principles by adhering to the letter and spirit of the law. We should avoid creating an appearance of impropriety. What we have a right to do does not equal what is right to do. The phrase, what we have a right to do does not equal what is right to do, provides an overarching demarcation between abuse and care for public office. Next. 
the policy outlines eight standards. Six of the eight use the phrase shall not. For example, a public official shall not participate in the negotiations or execution of contracts, making loans, granting of subsidies, fixing of rates, issuance of permits or certificates or other regulation or supervision relating to any business, business entity in which he or she has directly or indirectly a financial or personal interest. MCL 15.347, number seven. Ethical conduct as defined within this policy is largely an obligation to abstain from or to not act upon imposed standards. This point is made well here. A public official should conduct themselves to avoid even the appearance of impropriety. MCL 15.341, number eight. I humbly urge this board to be above reproach, to uphold the integrity of their office, and to be accountable to the code of conduct and ethics policy. Thank you for your attention to this matter. All right, anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hello, board and everyone. My name is Kirsten Monte, Chateau West, Hudsonville. And I'd like to formally thank you for giving me the opportunity to interview next in two weeks. Um, although I don't come with a formal check the box background with community service title, um, I have lived and celebrated in this community for 10 plus years, partaking in many events, including the lovely Memorial Day Parade. Um, but what I do come back, come here with, with is with a 12 plus year um, background in business strategy, category management, and brand management. And although that sounds quite sterile, maybe in this setting, what it's actually done is nurtured a formal objective training in listening to all views, including consumers and perhaps constituents in this case, as well as a diverse board of stakeholders, and possibly most importantly, a good steward of the budget. And so I, I'm excited to share more, um, talk about my resume, my um, preferences that I've submitted as well, and uh, any questions you might have at the end. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll close the second public comment period. And for those who, who don't come regularly, Sometimes it can feel like you make a statement and we look at you and don't give you a substantive reply. It's, it's the format of things. Um, and so, again, if there's someone who wishes to talk with one of the board members afterward, uh, you're welcome to do so. And now sometimes during discussion, which is our point 14, you may hear um, board members take up uh, ideas or issues or, or words that have been uh, spoken from the public. And sometimes... Um, a quick answer can be found, and maybe it's not for anything that was brought up tonight, but sometimes we'll point you to someone like the zoning administrator or to, to Dan Carlton as our manager because they can give you a quick answer on a technical question. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, we don't, certainly don't mean to uh, give the impression that we're not listening. Um, so, Gary, I'll look to my left here, and, and I would ask you to direct your comments, obviously, through the chair. But I just, um, just my comments to some of the comments that are made tonight. Uh, number one, um, we represent Georgetown Township. We all represent Granville. You're on the other side of the border. And some of the comments were made tonight that that uh, we affect where you live across. The, we do not. We do not affect Granville. We do. We don't make any decisions for Granville. We don't collect money from Granville. We are Georgetown Township. That's where we are. To come across the border and make these kind of accusations every month, it's just throwing stones. And I'm okay. You want those stones? That's fine. That's ridiculous. Um, another comment made tonight about auto impact and some sort of financial, um, some financial thing that was between us. There is no financial. I have, first of all, I voted for the parade and I joined auto impact after the parade. I've gained no money from it and I've given no money to it. It's just a, it's just an entity. It's an entity that wishes to put conservatives in, in the public officials in Ottawa County. And I'm okay with that, because that's who I am too. And 
some of the statements that are made here are wrong, and they're they're said wrong, and they're they're they are dirtying the water. And it's ridiculous to come every month across the border. You don't live here. Come here every month and say the same thing over and over. I'm sorry. Really? You gotta get a life. I just, I'm sorry. That's my comment. Okay. Um, anything else while well, we're on the end with you? Any other uh, points of discussion on the yeah, board? You know, there's one more, there's one other thing too that's just been a little bit, <clears throat> um, bothersome to me, and this is because who I am. Um, I got my tax bill, uh, in the last couple of weeks. And I look at that tax bill, and it says Georgetown Township, and we're collecting property taxes. The bulk of them property taxes <clears throat> go to our area of public schools. And what bothers me is that as a board, Georgetown board trustee working for the township, is collecting money for public schools that are pushing an agenda that I don't agree with. And I'm talking about critical race theory. I'm talking about all this other stuff that's coming down the line. These are not things I agree with. And yet, the taxes are being collected by the township of which I represent as a trustee. And I know if people say, that's kind of a far stretch, but it really isn't. It's not a far stretch. I'm a trustee of the township. And I have to think that people voted me, people that voted for me have the same values that I have and disagree with some of the things that are being taught in these public schools. And yet we collect the money for it. And I'll be honest with you, I'm to the point where the public school can collect their own money. And the township will just collect the money that they need, and they can, if they want to do a millage, fine. If they want the money, they can collect and do whatever they want with it. But I feel like us being a pass-through for this thing, and, and then turning around and teaching stuff that I don't agree with, this whole, I mean, I read up on a lot of this stuff. Some of the stuff that's being taught right now is wrong, and it goes against what I believe. And I think it goes against what the majority of our township believes, too. That's my two cents worth. And I'll probably take a little bit of hate mail, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. Because the same individuals that have that agenda have to understand that I can come with an agenda, too. And that bothers me. I don't agree with it. And I feel like we're being uh, part of it. Because we just, we just compulsively collect the money and we ship it out to the schools. We don't say anything. And I think it's going to come back to bite us. We cannot continue to guilt our children into how bad they are because they're white. I am white. There's nothing I can do about it. What else? So we got we to we gotta figure out a way to do, the, do it in a better way. That's my two cents. All right. I'm done. All right. All right, Gary. Anyone else? Um, I would just for more discussion, yes. I would just say one that um, that Ottawa's declaration was actually that was a letter that was put together by the supervisor of Talmadge Township. Um, that wasn't Ottawa and Luke Meerman. And Luke Meerman. So there's no connection there, and there was no financial gain or personal interest. So I think to make accusations could be a dangerous thing. So I think I would just suggest be very careful. I think you know that as an attorney, you got to be careful what you say because sometimes it can come back around. Um, but with Gary, too, I know we had talked about, I don't know if it was a couple of years ago at the board, I had questioned is why is the township collecting money for government schools? Um, they can collect their own money. And we looked into it, and apparently we had an opt-out in 1979 or something. We're obligated to collect. And we looked into that to find out, is there, there's got to be a way out. You can't commit to something in 1979 and... State law requires us to collect. We get like property tax. Bucks for everyone or something. What is it? 250. 250, okay. 250. Like an administrative fee almost, yeah. Yeah, and I would definitely like to see that broken down more to find out just based on what our actual costs are. I know it's kind of been, you know, we, we don't lose money on it and we're not in a position to make money. And if we did make money, it's the taxpayers who are, the residents who are getting penalized again if we charged more. So it's a difficult thing, but I think I guess it'll be a discussion with state representative and state senator. All right. Ryan, uh, I, I'm impressed uh, with the stuff that I've seen so far about the playground upgrades. They've looked really good. And then uh, the only other thing that I want to say is I believe the public 
I believe one of the statements was, public interest was served. I don't know, going up and down that road on Memorial Day and the ceremony at the, the cemetery, I think public interest was served that day. I think the amount of smiles and happiness that, that was created in that process, I, I don't regret a thing. I think that Memorial Day, we needed that. So that's all I wanted to say. All right. Becky, anything? Nope. Nothing? Okay. I want to say, and, and Chief's here tonight, but uh, you, I think, saw an email, and I want to commend the Chief and whoever it was that responded, but, uh, you know, there was a swimmer who was in trouble in 8th Avenue Park and uh, I don't think was going to make it. Um, so uh, save the life, you know, save the life. So on the call of duty, appreciate all that you guys do. So every life here is precious. I think it may have been a non-resident, but that doesn't matter. It's life coming in our townships, you know. And uh, you guys were there when you needed to be there, so we appreciate it. Okay, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Forward. Forward. All in favor, say aye. 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 And adjourn.